I'm uh, Chris Carroll, and I write the bookmarking blog for NewsOK.com's Books and Reading section. And we're here today with Michael Owens. He's the author of the new book, Yes, I Am Who I Am. And uh, Michael, I wonder if you could talk a little bit first about sort of your life experiences that led to what your sub the subtitle of the book is, A New Philosophy of Black Identity. Yes. Well, Chris, first of all, thank you for, for having me today. And um, I grew up in the inner city of Milwaukee. Uh, I have a very unique, I think, experience. I was Im uh, emerged into the public school and then I went to a private school. And those two experiences kind of shaped my notion of what identity, um, the challenges to identity. For instance, in the public school I was, I was a light-skinned child with green eyes. I was very much ostracized. In the private school I was, there was 10 percent black in the school so there was still a, another uh, division, as you could say that. So I began to think about identity, uh, how I fit within a given society or within the culture itself from a very early age. And, and that kind of early look at uh, identity led to a sort of uh, mature extra Jesus into the topic of identity. And I, th I think it's significant your book is about black identity, yes. not African-American identity. Yeah. Can you talk a little bit about what you think the distinction is there and what, why black is a, is a preferable term? Well, I think that uh, black American, I think about the uh, American experience and, and how can we begin to construct an identity based upon that concept. Now, Africa, for instance, is a continent, uh, not a country. Uh, made up of 53 countries, as a matter of fact, and I detail in the book how those on the continent identify themselves not through their country nor through their tribe but through their clan. Mm. So you have this three-tier effect when you talk about identity. And so if we say a Chinese American, there's a China with a tradition, with a language, with a history. So when we talk about black Americans reaching toward Africa, yeah, there is nostalgia for Africa, but there's no genuine connection to formulate an identity out of that. And so I say in the book, my argument is such that we must begin to carve out our identity from the American experience. I'm interested in your chapter about hip hop too. I'm curious, what are your thoughts about how hip hop has affected black identity? Yeah. Well, you know, there is a rising scholarship that talks about hip hop being the new form of black identity. Um, and what I do in the book, I, I put hip hop in this right context. Um, and I think hip hop um, is not uh, I would not say that it is the cause of all social ills. However, when it comes to the imagery that comes out, um, it, 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 um, it's polarizing in itself. And so an identity for black people must reach a consensus. And if you have a genre that is polarizing, that is generational, then how can you reach that consensus? And I think it speaks originally, it's, it, it was speaking to the um, to the um, the street life and the and the struggle and the and kind of the p political uh, movement of early hip hip hop, but we find that a lot of it today is seventy percent of it is by, bought by white America and it's very corporate driven. So it is a commercial movement, not a identity movement. Hmm. Do you think it's kind of gotten away from its original roots? Oh, into definitely. A yeah, and I think that conversation is even happening within the hip hop community mm -hmm. itself. And I also talk about that in the book and trace that um, the sort of the gatekeepers of hip hop, how they have um, driven the music in a direction that is only profit driven. Mm -hmm. And so I think for it to be an identity movement, I also talk about in the book how it needs to again begin to reshape itself and. Uh, tap into those roots originally, and I think it can be part of an identity movement, but never be the catalyst for mm. a black identity. And your book calls, um, it, it describes it, uh, the black identity as a, a broken identity, mm. and what do you think are some solutions to that broken identity? Well, I think we have to do, we have to go back and re-educate ourselves. We begin to tell our story within the context of the American narrative. And so there's a re-education re component that needs to happen. So once we begin to tell these stories, when we talk about the early aspirations of black people, it was citizenship, it was equality, it was an education. Uh, there was a certain pride involved in that. Um, there was a certain um, idea of partnership 
along with other Americans in building this great country that we live in. And so I think those are some of the themes that we need to interject, not only um, at the dinner table, but also in the universities. You know, I'm, I'm an advocate for, I, I like Black uh, History Month and I think it's great, but I think it's more important, that was never the goal, it's more important to ensure that black history is American history and that it's in the textbooks, it's celebrated just like every other, um, everyone's history in the country and it's a shared, I think a shared past and a shared future. That's an aspect of your book that I really liked. It's not just for black people and it talks about reaching out to other communities and how other communities can reach out yes, also. Yes, um, yes. And your book is available at Full Circle Bookstore, yes. Amazon.com, yes. BarnesandNoble.com, yes. and your website is a really interesting resource too yeah. for people who are interested in these topics and yes. to learn more about the yes. book. It's yes. blkidentity.com. Yes. Thanks again for being here, Michael. Okay. Well, thank it's a really you. interesting book. I hope people will check it out. Well, thank you, Chris. Okay. Appreciate it. Let's see it.